topics. We're diving deep into one big issue today. And today's topic is tomorrow, Friday, marks the first 100 days in office for Lagos Governor Babajide Sonwolu. And today's big hard fact is this. The standard of assessing the first 100 days comes from the USA and President Franklin Roosevelt's swift actions when he took office in 1933 during the Great Depression. Roosevelt showed the world just how much a new chief executive can do using her political capital from a fresh election. New broom sweeps the best, they say. So there's been a lot of public commentary about Governor uh, Sonwolu's first 100 days. And it's not just our governor. It's all the other new governors as well. Nigerians are trying to take stock of their performance and figure out who has done well, um, who has, uh, shall we say, left a lot of room for improvement. And throughout the rest of this hour, I want to hear from you on this point. I want to hear what you think of Governor Sonwolu's first 100 days in office. How would you assess it? Would you say he has performed above or below your expectations, your own expectations? I mean, beyond expectations, of course. Would you say that he has performed well or he's performed badly? And if you think he's done well, what particular achievements are you most happy with? If you think he's done badly, what are the areas where he has disappointed you the most? What do you expect from the governor going forward? I'm not going to be the one talking to you today, uh, or the only one anyway. I'm joined by a, a panel of guests from various parts of the political spectrum to discuss these first 100 days. One of my guests uh, is a politician and businessman who was most recently uh, Governor Sonwolu's opponent in the gubernatorial elections, Babatunde Badamosi. Thank you so much, sir, for joining us on the show. Thank you very much, Sandra. It's nice to be here. Yes. Usual. And on the phone, I have uh, the Publicity Secretary of the Governor's Political Party, the All Progressives Congress, APC, uh, Biodun Salami. Mr. Salami, thank you so much for joining us on Hard Facts. It's my pleasure to be with you. Yes. Good now, afternoon. We, good afternoon. We were supposed to also have um, the newly appointed Commissioner for Information, Benga Motosho. Unfortunately, he is unavailable. He's not taking his calls. Uh, he was supposed to uh, talk to us um, via the Chief Press Secretary of the Governor. But uh, I'm sure he's going to join us some other time. Now, here's my first question for each of you. And I'm going to start with you, Mr. Salami. Let's get right to the point. On a scale of 1 to 100, how much would you rate someone who's 100 days in office and why? Uh, to the glory of God and uh, to the glory of uh, Lagosians, beautiful people, the governor has, is a determined Nigerian, a determined Lagosian. He has, seeking, he has gotten the mandate of the people of Lagos and is so resilient, so determined, you know, to, to ensure that all the dividends of democracy are promised will be delivered in schedule time. That is the four years. But that is not to say, the, four, the one, first 100 days, if I begin to roll out his pro his achievement, maybe you will not mind me. Yes, but I don't mind. Say, Go ahead. Yes. yes. You know, one of the first problems he so, so, so identified when he got into power mm. was to, you know, to have seen that the road networks were so bad in you know, the in deployable states, and you just have to face it headlong. And one of his cardinal programs includes that of uh, traffic management to ensure that Lagos is ease of traffic. And if you want to agree, agree with me, the only problem, one of the greatest you know, impediments is the road network. Both was there and there wouldn't have allowed free flow. And that was why he so decided to fortify the, the public works corporation and ensure that you know, they make sure that they build all the bad roads in Lagos. At least as I was speaking today, the Gossels have seen, you know, two sides of relief, serious one, over 90% of the roads have been fixed. And today, one of the greatest problems has been solved. And it's why we have free flow. And our social observer in our various cars are getting better these days, instead of getting spoiled. Two, is that the aspect of refuse management, which was one of the problems he inherited, he has decided to face it so squarely that today, you really, you will not even see, I don't want to say really, you will not even see any refuse on our Lagos rules anymore. Because, you know, the fri private sector has been so mobilized, that is the PSP of the lower section, they been so mobilized, and everybody knows these are responsibilities, and they have been paid as a 20. And so, this, of course, there will be no problem. So, 
these are the two major areas, mm. at least. That he's, that he's worked on in the, in the first hundred days. When he worked on, when he got him. Now, I asked, so you, I, I asked you to rate him. What would you score him mm. on a scale of 1 to 100? Ab above 90. Ab above very 90. above 90. Okay. Very above 90. All very right. So, uh, Mr. Wadamosi, um, on a scale of 1 to 100, how much would you rate some will lose first hundred days in office and why? I'd say about, um, if we're being totally honest, mm. I'd say roughly about 25%. Okay. Why? Um, well, the two issues that the uh, publicity secretary has touched on, um, in my opinion, are uh, achievements in the reverse. This morning on my way out of Ibejuleki, coming into town, I actually took the trouble to make a video of the journey, a live video on Facebook. Mr. Publicity Secretary, if you please, I'm you can it. go on, on my Facebook. It's Babatunde Ogbadamosi. The live, video, the live videos are still there from this morning. And you can see clearly that first off, in terms of uh, road networks, as you so quaintly put it, Governor Saulu has failed, at least in Ibejuleki and Etiosa, the, you know, the areas which I traversed through to get into town. Um, the idea of uh, this so-called palliative measures, that's the language they use, uh, that they use to so-called repair the roads with uh, uh, granite and sand, and uh, they basically just compact that over potholes that they find in the road. Of course, when it rains, the whole thing washes away, and we're back to square one. You know, this is evident all along the Leke Ekbe Expressway. It's evident all over Lagos State. It's evident in Ikorodu and so on that these so-called palliative measures are mere exercises in, you know, cosmetics. That's what I would call them. In fact, it, cosmetics is better, let's be honest. Okay? So that's that with the road network. With refuse, that's also very obvious. I think last night... As I said on the video, on my way back into, on my way back into um, Ibejuleki from town, I did notice an unusually large number of refuse vehicles operating very late in the night. At about 10:30 p.m., I noticed them all along the Kekwe Expressway at different spots. Um, I think perhaps in order for the governor to make the spectacular claim that he made. Uh, that he reportedly made today, uh, that he had cleaned up Lagos. Um, you know, a, a special dispensation was made for the PSPs to work overnight last night. And guess what? A lot of the expressway is clean-ish, but there are still garbage dumps all over Leke Ekbe Expressway. That you can see in the video that I made this morning, the live Facebook video that I made this morning. So. As to those two claims, I think we can puncture those right away. Mm. You know, um, mm -hmm. zero. That's that's the th that's what the governor scored on those points. Now, in terms of publicity, the governor has done well. That's where the twenty-five percent comes from. Okay. Okay. He has. When you say publicity. What do you mean? I mean, you know, um, painting a rosy image of himself and of his. Uh, his activities in Lagos State, okay. you know, with pictures. He does take quite a copious amount of pictures, selfies, and so on, you know, trying to project the Lagos brand. He has done well with that, okay. and I applaud him for that. But that's not the reason why he was elected. The reason he was elected are the promises that he made during the campaign, I hope. Um, and I say elected advisedly because, of course, we all saw what happened during the so-called elections. Uh, but that's not, what we're that's not what we're here to discuss today. What mm. we're here to discuss is what has he done? And the answer, in terms of his effect on Lagosians in general, is nothing. He's not done very much to help Lagosians. What are the issues confronting Lagosians? Like I identified at the debate. First one is traffic. The fact that people are spending seven hours of their waking day, every day, in traffic, commuting. Okay? That has not been addressed by this governor. Okay, refuse is another problem. It has not been addressed by this governor. Okay, and it's a systemic thing. All right? It comes down to what system do you adopt to take care of these issues? And I, in my opinion, 
the governor is still stuck in the old uh, APC ways of centralizing everything in Alausa. And that will not work. Okay. Now, we're, we're going to um, get down into the governor's campaign manifesto called Themes eventually. But one mm-hmm. of the official statements, uh, Mr. Salami, from the governor's yeah. office, and I mean, the Commissioner for Information would have been best suited to answer this question, but he's not taking his calls at the moment. I'm here for him. I'm here for him. Okay. So the governor's mm-hmm. office uh, released uh, a statement, and uh, they say that um, one of the successes of the first 100 days is uh, his naming of his cabinet as one of the achievements. Is naming a cabinet within 100 days an achievement? Mr. Salami. It's one of, it's one of uh, what is expected of him okay. as a governor. So if he has succeeded in doing that, as he has done, it's an achievement. It's but, but some people would say and that the governor took too long. He has, no, he has, you see, it's about strategic thinking and strategic planning. You don't just bring any, any moron to say because you want to run a government. You have mm. to know the pedigree of those who want to bring on board. You understand? So it takes a little time to know who and who is this. Over 600 CVs were sub- you know, you know, submitted to the party, to the governor, to say we are, they are interested to run this beautiful state you know, of aquatic splendor, Lagos state. So we are all, everybody is a stakeholder. The gentleman in the studio is a stakeholder. He has pointed out two areas. He agrees with me that the government has done so well on those two, huh? despite the fact that he will never see anything good out of, you know, out of this government. <laughs> but that is not to say. We want to appreciate his concern. He has shown a particular area. And that every government is continuum. You have to improve on every, everything. That is why we appreciate people like that. They criticize. When you criticize objectively, we will take it headlong. All over the world, it's not like that. Mm. Well, some people, some people also tell you that uh, countries like India and South Africa, where a national cabinet was named within days of swearing in, exists. So why, what, why shouldn't what, it be easier what, for what state are, what cabinets? Are, what are, excuse me, my sister. What are we seeing today? Are we not seeing xenophobia in South Africa? What has that got to do with cabinets? That is because they have not done strategic planning. Okay. You don't just come up to say this is. Just wow. don't come up with people must be people must face their responsibility headlong. Wow. Of course, if you appoint some people, you saw what we what we did. After the appointment, they went to three or three, I don't want to be precise, that four days retreat hmm. to give them all the past governors all they learned to they learned when they went into the retreat to give their own credence, to give their own experience. So it is about strategic thinking. It's not about strategic planning. It's not about you just coming up to say, we have uh, Mr. Biodin Salami online. Let's talk uh, strategy now, Mr. Salami. Governor, someone whose campaign manifesto was called Themes. Themes. Yes, I want us to look at each area of the manifesto in his first 100 days. Now, for you who doesn't know, Themes stands for Traffic Management and Transportation, Health and Environment, Education and Tech, Making Lagos a 21st Century City and security yeah. and governance. So let's take yeah. them one by one. Let's start with traffic. Let's traffic. talk about a specific promise that then candidate Sonwo Lu made before the election. In a conversation mm-hmm. with his graduating class from LBS, he promised to solve the Apapa traffic gridlock problem within 60 days yeah. in office. No, Has that said. promise no. been kept? No. And if not, why he, not? He, he, that, that statement wasn't credited to him. 60 days is not a magician. The PDP administration left that a beautiful road the last 16 years un- unattended to. That's part the good revenue they're collecting from that. Did you say that statement wasn't credited to him? It wasn't 60 days could not be credited to the governor. We have it on audio, sir. Do you uh, want me to play the audio? To, maybe you have to play it to me. Okay, here we go. Mm. <laughs> um, okay, so this is it's a campaign issue. It's very serious. I'm going to take it very, very seriously. I believe that it's something we're going to solve the first six days of our government. Uh, also set up. Your first six. I, I believe that uh, it's six start to work this week for next week. But I can tell you from day one to one of the places that I've been to, there's one of the offers. And you will see that. Hello? Did you hear that, sir? 
It's not horrible. But that is not, let us not, let us say it. Let us say the program as it is. It's not horrible. I'm not hearing you from. I heard I'm it. Not um, hearing Mr. Bonamosi, from did you hear it? I heard it very clearly. Oh. Um, I and, and I'm surprised. I'm sorry. I'm surprised that he actually, I'm surprised that he actually said that because at the debate, he did not promise 60 days actually. I'm surprised that he said that there. Hmm. Because no, I, I heard him say very clearly. Event. At the debate, he said a different thing. Yeah, at the debate, he said a hundred days. Yes, a hundred days. Okay, yes. so fine. Okay, so it's a so hundred days now. Uh, it's it's a hundred days now, Mr. Salami. Um, yes. Has he has has that promise been kept? And you 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 will see that it's it's improving seriously. <laughs> a papa is improving seriously. You will see. It's you not. agree with me that Papa is really improving. It's not. In terms of the I, disag I disagree totally. It's uh, not. Mr. Mr. And Mr. I can confirm that because I'm a customer of a Papa. Okay, so you, 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 you'll you get your chance. Mm. Hold on. Let me finish hearing from Mr. Mm. Salami. Mr. Salami, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the traffic has been attended to. Wow. And one of the one of the strategic ways of attending to it mm. was to encourage the last mile organization. You understand? It did give them incentive. It, you know, it gave them incentive that is in terms of, uh, what do you call it now, uh, uh, bonuses that will encourage them to do their work as expected. And the recent time, one of the lady, one of the lady workers in the last month had an accident, got died. You know what the governor did? He gave 10 million to the family. So, so to, this is deliberate attempt to encourage others that in the course of work, if there's anything, anything happens. Well, well, while while that is great, while that is great, um, how mm. does that relate with the traffic at Apapa? That is what I'm telling you. Efficiency. He has encouraged them to be efficient in the course of duty. Okay. That is, they, they, it's just like you're in the studio and somebody is giving you extra, you know, hour bonus. Then you have to work harder. Did that 10 million come from the governor's pocket or from state funds? From the state port, yes. It's from the state port. Who, who approved but, it? Did the House of Assembly approve it? Of course, of course. It's approved. All right, let me ask it's you, approved. Mr. Badamosi. The government has contracted a private consulting firm to analyze traffic flows on the island. Mm. That's the reason they waived toll gate fees on a couple of occasions uh, to assess the natural um, traffic flow. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't yeah. this a sign that the government is taking a serious data-driven approach to solving the traffic problem? I totally disagree. We have a Ministry of Budget and Planning. We have a Ministry of Works. We have officials who are paid, perhaps not enough, to be honest, if we're being perfectly honest. The salaries that are being paid, like I said at the debate, are disgraceful in the public sector um, but be that as it may such contracts as the one you mentioned uh, sweetheart contracts usually given to you know feather some supporters nest or the other and that sort of thing I mean this is data that can be collected raw by local government officials by uh, LASMA officials even okay they can collect this data, and the, the, the equipment to collect the data is not, is not that complicated. You know, you can simply have people standing with counters, simply counting traffic as it goes past. Okay, you can have different sets of people counting different types of traffic with, you know, manual counters that they can count out. When they finish counting them out, they take the next one and keep counting and so on like that. So that's how these sort of things are done, and you don't need uh, a specialist so-called uh, uh, operation to have that done. The other way you can do it is by using uh, uh, you, can, you can use specific satellite data or aerial uh, surveillance data that you can generate yourself by just simply putting up drones. You can do that yourself. You, you don't need specialist companies you know, with fat contracts to do that sort of thing. Um, in my opinion it's just another way of siphoning away public funds. Um, and that's that's in, that's always been in the culture and tradition of the APC, and <laughs> and the other thing is if they really wanted the data for the Lekki Ekwe Expressway, mm -hmm. they could simply have asked the company they concessioned they concessioned it to. They have the information. They have data of every vehicle that passes through the toll gate. They have data of every vehicle that passes through the Chevron toll gate, through the Marocco toll gate. They have data of every. They should have data of every vehicle that passes through the Lekki Ekbe Expressway, all the way from Ekbe, right down to Ozumba and Badiwe. Now, if they don't have it, that's a major failing on the part of the concessionaire. And it begs the question as to how the government arrived at the decision back when uh, 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 Ashwa Jubala Ahmed Tinubu was the governor of Lagos State to hand over 
a key asset of Lagos, the Lekke Expressway, to an unknown private company that had no previous record of achievement in that specific area of uh, road management. Now, um, for me, that contract just signposts the fact that the APC is an unserious political party intent, <laughs> intent on bilking the, the poor taxpayers of Lagos State for every penny that we can find. I mean, can you imagine that the Lekki Expressway uh, concession, the concessionaire, LCC, their first loan was from Lagos State government, the same Lagos State government that concessioned the road to them. $42 million of public funds was lent to them. It was given to them as a loan. After Lagos State government, the same Lagos State government gifted them 1,500 hectares of land in the Bejuleke area around Lakowe. It was this same governor, uh, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, that consummated this unholy deal. Okay, so if they can't ask the LCC for data, about the Lekki Expressway, then what the hell are we doing? All right. Uh, I'm glad you brought up funds. Uh, Mr. Salami, I want to ask you, where did the money for paying the traffic consultants come from? Was it captured in the budget presented by former Governor Ambode? Of course, the government, the government would have acted of Travaya. And uh, we're conscious of everything, everything we do. But it has to do with the law. Hmm. So, of course, I want to tell you, Affirmatively, that of course is there. Okay. Now, I, I, I have no, a question on, to sir. ask about. Hold on, if, sir. If you don't mind, I have one hold question. Hold on, sir. I do mind. Hold on. Now, I'm asking this question in light of the current probe by the House of Assembly into former former Governor Ambode, uh, Mr. Salami, for allegedly buying buses without approval of the of the money from the House of Assembly. So, was the money Governor Samolu used to pay these consultants approved by the State Assembly for that purpose? I've answered in affirmative, yes. Okay. All right, then. Let's uh, move on. Would you say that uh, the governor's achievements in transport and uh, uh, traffic management in these first 100 days are impactful? That was what I've just said. That <laughs> one of the best ways. Yes. We have achieved so much, mm. so, so much in Lagos. And Lagosians are applauding it. Forget wow. about what everybody says. Okay. The students, yeah. okay. The bottom line is, what is the general public saying about this administration? I can tell he you that. He has his own view. I he, can he, tell he, you he, that. You, you, we get the views of the I people. have a few we comments. I have a people. few comments from members of the public on my Facebook page that I can tell you what the people we, of Lagos we, actually we, think. Do you want to hear? Gentlemen, please. One after would the you, other. Would you really like to uh, hear? Mr. Watamosi, please hold on. Mr. Salami, go ahead. Whenever you're, talk, whenever you're online, I give you your space. Yes, so please I let's respect my you. other guests. Mr. Salami, go ahead. Yes, go ahead, sir. So what I'm saying is, I can't give you in time. We get, the, we get the feedback from the people. And that is why the party is there. And that's why the government is responsible and responsive. At any given point in time, we listen and we get feedback. In terms of traffic management, we have done so well because if I, Jordan Salami, I own a car. I run a car on the road. And I know what I faced in the past. Today, I can say with all affirmation, I run through, our, I run through Lagos every day. So if somebody is running through a particular area and they are still feared, you know, there are some feared areas that we have not even attended to, we are still coming there. We are still coming there. We're still coming there. And then. let me tell you, mm. the free flow of traffic is the most important thing. We, Lagos, is a, they are enjoying, even in Badon Expressway, mm -hmm. that we are facing now at the federal level, that has been abandoned over the years mm -hmm. by the past government, which, including the, which included the related government and the, you know, the 16 years administration of PDP, you can see what is happening there. People are enjoying it. Even when we are giving, when there are problems on the road, people know that we are facing it long, that we're not allowing it to continue. So that is one of the reasons, that is one of the joy. All right, people let me ask enjoy. Lagos people. You're listening to yeah. the show. What's your opinion on Governor Samolu's handling of traffic and transportation in these 100 days? Have you noticed improvements or setbacks? What is he doing right? What is he doing wrong? Um, call us on 01277-0993. I'm going to take two calls and then we'll move on to security. 01277-0993, 01277-1993-2993 and... 3993. Don't forget, of course, that 01277 is our female only line just for female callers. Hello, Michael. Welcome. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, how is today now? Very well. Go ahead, real quickly. I'm, I'm enjoying your conversation. Go ahead, really quickly. Good afternoon. Good afternoon uh, to you, Michael. 
Yes, uh, I enjoy your conversation and I applaud you for. In fact, you said my there was this point you raised that he is like we are thinking the same way. If you needed data of cars flowing from uh, uh, passing through the toll gate at Lekki, you can actually get it precisely from the toll gate there. Because they are collecting toll, there should be a counter, a kind of a meter that reads the number of cars that moves across in order to checkmate the people that are collecting that toll. They do have to it. See that they, to see that they have an accurate you know, figure of the transaction that is going on there to balance the figure. So I, I think I, I concur with you there. All right, Michael. Thank, Thank you for you. calling. Our last call is from Meg. Hello, Meg. Hi, Sandra. Hi. Thank you for calling. Okay. Um, it's actually laughable to hear that uh, the person representing the government say all of these things. I, for one, am not even feeling the presence of the government. I am not. The impact he made before the, the election has just watered down. There's nothing happening. And like Mr. Badamosi said, there are few areas all over Lekki where I live as well. Mm. Nothing is happening. Let's tell ourselves the truth. How can you say it's calling the governor 90 days? Uh, nine, nine, over 90. Over, 90 over 100. Yeah. Mm. For a period of 100 days. What has he done to warrant that kind of scope? Mm. Let's not um, play lip service to, to things that are important to people. Look at what we've gone through in the last number of days. A government that is proactive would have been able to if you get some of the the, 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 the harm that has befallen innocent, innocent Nigerians that found themselves in, in Novara Mall and, and, and Tegu Mall as well. Yes. Please, let, let's stop this, uh, 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 this thing we do in Nigeria. It doesn't have to blame for the job of the governor. It doesn't have to. You should just say the way it is. 90, over 90% for, 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 for 100. They should have given him 100 or 100 for 100 days. <laughs> Meg, thanks for calling and sharing right. your thoughts. Now, um, I, I'm taking, gentlemen, I'm taking the various um, areas of themes in order. If you just joined the show, by the way, welcome. You're listening to Hard Facts on 99.3 Nigeria Info. I'm Sandra S. Zekwesley. I have the Publicity Secretary of the Governor's Political Party, APC, on the line. His name is Abiodun Salami. I also have a politician and businessman who was recently uh, one of Governor Somolu's opponents in the gubernatorial elections, Baba Tunde Badamosi, and together we are looking at Governor Songolu's first 100 days. We have seen a rise in cult clashes in recent months, uh, Mr. Salami. Now, I'm taking them, I'm taking these different uh, parts of the themes based on what my listener thinks is important. Yeah, so that's yeah. why I'm talking about security. Yeah. And this week we've been talking about cult clashes a lot. What is the governor's strategy for tackling this? And what results has that strategy yielded in 99 days? Well, my, uh, I have to tell you today, hmm. we, we succeeded in launching, I mean, giving uh, the, the, the Nigerian police, you know, 145 uh, patrol vehicles. That happened today? And today, today, yes. Okay. I'm saying it loud and clear. And 45 traffic uh, motorcycles, you know. Just more for me, because... Uh, security is a serious business. It is, it is, security is a daily challenge. It is not something you want to sit back to say, yeah, today is okay. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. Okay. So, at any given point in time, any serious government will always be ready at all times to talk about, to face security at long. And one of the things we have done today is to, to assist the Nigerian police and all security agencies today, you know, to mobilize them. And this happened, happened today? today? That, that happened today. Hmm. For, for, I'm telling you affirmatively. On well, the 99th five, day? No, it's not about 99th day. It's about what, <laughs> he, like he said there, there must be provision. To get 145 vehicles is not something just stick on the road. Okay. You understand? So there must, you must be, so you must be, you must, there must be you know, strategic, uh, you, know, you know, reasoning to, to, to get all these things to put together. What, so was the, what, today, what was the strategic reasoning? Tell us. Now, having reason that Lagos, you know, we, Lagos has been saved over the years okay. from all successful governments. Negotiations have been sleeping with their two eyes closed, responsibly closed. And today we say we should improve on it. And that is what we have done today. Do you agree, Mr. Bodamosi? Totally not. Um, Come again. I I'm asking Mr. Bodamosi now. The, uh -huh. the idea 
that uh, simply handing over a few vehicles. One hundred forty-five um, vehicles enough. is few. Yes, it is. Oh. We are talking about the government of the fifth largest economy in Africa. It is very few. When you're talking about policing uh, 24 million you, you, people... Come, let me interject you clearly. You do reason that police, police formation is, is, a, is under exclusively and is not supposed to be legal to government responsibility? But the governor is the chief security officer of the state. Uh, that's the why he's supporting. He's supporting. He's not being supporting so, now. And the governor does get and a security vote. Now, what that security vote, vote is used for is the question now. And what we're and talking about here, here, what we're talking about here, today. What we're talking about here is the security of the lives and property of 24 million Lagosians, most of whom pay taxes, despite all the denials by your party that only 800,000 Lagosians pay taxes. The fact is the opposite. A large number of Lagosians, almost all Lagosians pay, da pay taxes I, I, I want directly to and indirectly. You you directly you and indirectly. From. Directly and indirectly. But I do have to say... pay I, taxes. I do have now, to say, because of those taxes, Because we, of those taxes, mm -hmm. people are entitled to feel secure in their homes. So mm -hmm. your argument, you know, the argument by the... Uh, uh, APC, Publicity secretary. the APC spokesman mm -hmm. that Lagosians are sleeping responsibly in their homes. I really don't get that. But I do have to ask you, Mr. Badamosi, yeah. uh, the state government doesn't control the police or civil defense. Hold that on. That may well be true. Or, or state security I service. That. I recognize now, that. Now, is it not unfair to criticize someone for security or no, any not. governor when he doesn't have power to do much about it? No, it's not. It's not unfair. Because there are ways and means you know, that are available to the governor uh, by which he can enhance the security, the activities of the police, apart from giving them equipment, apart from providing them with financial and moral support. I mean, for instance, let me ask uh, Mr. Publicity Secretary. Yeah, well, yes. The policemen that are going to drive these vehicles yeah. and operate them, um, how have you improved their personal financial circumstances? How have you made sure that they, how has your government made sure that they have very little to worry about in terms of their own personal financial security and that of their families? Have you of done anything? Course, have you done anything? Have you given them? Have you given them allowances? Have you given them? Of course, you know we do that. Of course, you know. You no, know I don't know that you do. That. You know. I'm I, not I don't know. I'm not a magician. And that is. And that's I'm not a magician. Until you tell us. Until you, 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 you told us, for instance, now yes, we did not know that you donated that you kindly donated 145 vehicles. We didn't know that until you told us. So you need to let. You need to do your job. You need to do your job and let Lagosians know. If the Commissioner for Information. If the State yeah. Commissioner for Information fails mm. in his duty, you as the party spokesman should be speaking up for your party. You shouldn't have Brother Mossi calling you out. It's that should not, not be happening. It's not, it's not about Mr. You, Publicity about Secretary, do your job. Yeah. All right, Mr. Brother Mossi, hold on. Hold on, Mr. Brother And that's what we're doing now. We give, them, we give them allowances, and that's why we have... How much uh, do you give them? Tell us, how I'm much do you give them? How much? Maybe, maybe I will ask you to go to go to. No, go no, no. You should tell us. Since no. you know, Mr. tell us how much do you give them. I challenge you, you because Mr. I have a lot of policemen. Listen, I have a lot of policemen as personal Mr. friends. Mr. Badamosi, I have a lot of policemen as personal friends. I still visit them at their barracks, and the conditions under which these people are living are atrocious. Again, they are again, disgraceful. I have to mention, Mr. Badamosi, so please do the, not patronize the us. The one, the one working do not patronize with us. State government, the one working directly with Lagos Every state policeman state working in Lagos is working directly with Lagos state government. Whether you, whether you acknowledge no, that or not, every of the 24,000 policemen and women working in Lagos are working with the government of Lagos state. And if you deny that, it shows that you are a highly irresponsible person. Gentlemen, gentlemen, let's, let, let's move forward. 24,000 policemen and women work in Lagos. They work for the government of Lagos State, whether you want to acknowledge that or not. Okay, so I'm going to have to put up uh, uh, Mr. Badamosi's mic so that I can take this conversation back. Gentlemen, we need to hear each other. If you're both shouting at each other, we cannot hear people make their points. So let's do it one after the other. Let's move on, oh. shall we? Uh, Mr. Salami, we just saw in the last couple of days acts of vandalism against companies here in Lagos that are connected mm. to South Africa. Lagos yeah. is a commercial state. The government needs revenue from our corporate citizens. What the, steps... The government, the government of the day condemned that act in totality. Yes, condemning is one and thing. The, the, but but what steps... That we are never in support of that. We're a responsible government. We never allow that. That's good. It, it take, and we will never tolerate that. What that's steps what is the government taking to coordinate and, yes, with the security but, agencies to get the that, riots under control? 
It's under control from yesterday. You saw it. Mm. The police were proactive. They were there. They were there on time. The task force team were there on that to dispatch all these things. And on all these formations, there has been, you know, police presence there. All these South African, you know, establishments. There has been present police presence there. Go out there in Lagos and see this thing I'm saying. Go to all shop guys to see police presence. Every police presence there. Mm. And that is what we're saying. That is responsible government. We have condemned it. We have warned all the parents to, 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 to we have given this a very strict warning to all, you know, a mother's parents to warn their wives and children not to partake in all this rubbish. This is irresponsible. We don't take that. Uh, Mr. Badamosi, let me ask you. You ran for governor. Um, how long would it have taken you to name commissioner if you, uh, commissioners if you had won? Did, did you have people in mind that yes, you, for your cabinet during your campaign? Now, I'm asking because... Um, the governor named his first batch of commissioners on July 14th. That's 46 days into his term. Uh, he named the second batch on August 19th. That's 82 days into his term. So we have only had a full set of commissioners for 18 out of 100 days. Yes. And some people will say that uh, it could have added to the delay in formulation of policies and implementation of these policies. As somebody who ran and wanted to be governor... How long would he have taken you? 24 hours after swearing in. You had people in mind? <laughs> yes. I already had people in mind from all over the world. Some of them Lagosians, some of them not. Okay. Name, uh, a, name a few of your potential uh, nominees. I, 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 I want to it. see if you would have truly I, I, been ready. I can't do that. But you said you were ready. Yes, I was. But I can't, I can't, is, name, I can't name them now. It is because easier said than done. I can't name them now. I know who they are. Mm. Like, for instance, it, let me give you one example. Thank you. Let me, it, let me it, give you one Mr. example Slami. of somebody. Remember, it, it Mr. Swami, remember what I yes. said. I want to hear one mm. person at a time. At a time, yes. Thank Maybe you. I'll have to contribute to that. Too. Oh, yes, you, you, you will. Easier. Hold on, Mr. Yes. Salami. When he's okay. done, then you can talk. Uh, Mr. Okay, okay, Let okay, me give okay. you one example mm. of somebody that I would have named as a commissioner for uh, technology okay. in Lagos. One, Mr. Said Adepoju. If you are in the tech industry in, in Lagos and even in the U.S., mm -hmm. you'll know him. Okay. Okay. Um, Said Adekpoju is one of those guys, one of those kids back in the day. Okay. That uh, one of the few Nigerian boys, I think there were maybe two of them, that uh, uh, joined together to create their own tablet, a Nigerian, a Niger uh, an indigenously produced Nigerian uh, tablet. Okay. Okay. Um, back when tabs were still new on on the market, so to speak. So somebody like that, I would have named as commissioner for information technology. Um, we also have. Uh, some specialists in the area of infrastructure. I can name one. Uh, it would have been a very long reach, but I would have either got him or somebody he would nominate, and that's Bayo Gulesi, okay, as Commissioner for Infrastructure. Look, my view of Lagos is clearly not the same view that these people have. My view of Lagos is as a world-class competitive city, a competitive state, that we're competing with the likes of Singapore, we are competing with the likes of Dubai. That is what Lagos is up against, in my opinion. Okay, And so I would not have appointed unknown people. All right, Mr. Salami, let me hear your thoughts. I am just going to say that uh, you will agree with me that uh, Mr. Gwadalmazi might not be a good governor in Lagos. Maybe that oh, was why right, Lagosian... Maybe that was why Lagosian did not vote for him. No, okay. there why was no election. We all know there was one, no election. One after the other. We yeah. all know Mr. that there was no Mr. election. Mr. We all know that. Mr. Mr. We saw scenes of voters being chased away from polling yeah. units okay, I'm by your thugs. Mic again. I'm putting off yeah, your mic is. again. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Salami. Now, what I'm saying is this. It is that you are the flag bearer. Maybe it's not even representing any party. That you are the flag bearer of a particular party makes it a teamwork. It's not something you just sit down in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the corner of your in the corner of your room and name you know forty two communities overnight. There are stakeholders there and there. There are interests. In the Igbo communities are there. Outer communities are there. Oh, you, it's a cosmopolitan state. You don't just sit down to say this is the person I want to put there. There are other things. There are other variable factors you have to consider. It's not about one man's opinion. It's a collective thing. It's just like a football a football game. You have to think. You have to play together. Before you score, that's what that is what is happening. Those were the reasons why we have a problem of delay. And when you see somebody who just named commissioner like he would have done, that is what we see in South Africa. 
Uh, okay, let's uh, move on to the people who are listening to the show. I want to ask you now to join the conversation. Do you feel safer or less safe after 100 days of Songolu? How's the cultism situation in your area? How have government and the security agencies been responding to it? We'll take another two calls. Keep it short, 30 seconds. Don't start greeting anybody. Go straight to the point. 30 seconds. 01277-0993 for women. 01277-1993 and uh, 01277-2993 as well as 01277-3993. We're streaming this conversation on Facebook and YouTube as well as Twitter. So go and watch us live at Nigeria Info FM. We have Jojo. Hello, Jojo. 30 seconds. Hello, good evening. You're good calling evening, the female-only line, so please call us back. Female. Hello, Victor, welcome. Yeah. Victor, go ahead, you're live on the show now, 30 seconds. All right, all right. I was talking about what Mr. Salami just said. Okay. About the interest, about how you have to play football or something like that. Okay. <laughs> talking about you want to choose commission, but you cannot choose able hands. Mm -hmm. Because before you won the election, there are some people you have to talk to. You have, they have to organize their sports. They have to organize their artisans, their NURTW people. Now, because of that, you have to pay back. Then you have to choose someone who is not ready for that job, who doesn't have experience in that sector. Mm -hmm. All those interests, they are the reason why Lagos will move forward, why Nigeria will move forward. Mm -hmm. You understand? So the person you bow down to get to the top of the mountain is the person you serve. All right, Victor, so your 30 seconds are up. Thank you so much for uh, calling and uh, sharing your thoughts on the show. Let's talk to the next person. I think that's Aya now. Aya, you have 30 seconds. Straight to the point. Okay. Go. Yeah. Um, I want you to understand that you are dealing with politicians. Okay. You cannot expect objectivity from either person. Okay. And let me show, let me show it. Okay. The first is, from the governor's side, he scored him more than 90%. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, you know, is excessively exaggerated. Okay. That's a politician. From the... But I'm also who is in your studio there. Mm -hmm. He's called him zero. The 25% he's he called him 25%. Said, I scored him 25, not zero. You said it is only for public uh, relations, for advertisement. Yeah, but it's still a score. 25% is a score. Mm -hmm. I, I, mm -hmm. Your 30 seconds are up. Thanks for calling. But the good thing is we have people from both sides. So at least you cannot say we called only one side of the mm -hmm. equation. Now let's move on to health and environment. Um, the commissioner uh, um, you know, has talked a lot about some of the achievements of uh, the commission for information that is some of the achievements of this administration in the last 100 days. I want to talk about um, the four-week free health screening for children that the government organized last mm. month. Is this a one-off, Mr. Salami, or will such programs be done frequently? Of course, it's expected to be done repeatedly. The continual thing. <laughs> Legosians remain Legosians. The children remain the children. What would of it course, take to make of, such a program they, permanent and sustainable? What would it take? No, the Minister of Health is there, responsible to ensure that it's a continuous program. And that is what they will be doing. And I can assure you that. Okay. All right. Uh, there was some controversy over the fact that the free health screening was done in partnership with uh, Bosco, an NGA owned by Boss, uh, Babajide Songolu, and Ko Kadri Obafemi Hamzat, his deputy. Is it ethical for government to be conducting business with NGOs that uh, are owned and run or sponsored by the governor? Is that ethical? It is an, it's an intention to open up, gov up governors in Lagos. We can relate with any, NG, any organization that showed interest to partner with the government. And that is one of the examples we have so late. Do you think uh, it is ethical, Mr. Badamosi? I mean, you're, you're a businessman. Uh, if you had won the election, would you as governor be collaborating with organizations that you own? Is there no conflict of interest that, that there? That affiliated to me, absolutely not. You, uh, so there's a conflict of interest there? There's a clear conflict of interest. It's very <laughs> obvious that... Um, you know, any organization that is related to me or affiliated to me in any way, shape, or form should not be seen to be or actually be involved in anything that government is doing, a government that I control. That should not be the case. Um, clearly, ethics are not the strongest suit of the APC. They, they've never really been particularly ethical. <laughs> they, they tend to ride roughshod over issues relating to ethics and you know like you can hear him chuckling in the background that's their general attitude to uh, you know ethical issues 
uh, when it comes to governance because as far as they are concerned, there is no separation, there is no, there is no dividing line between uh, uh, public assets and their personal assets. And that's the way they treat government. And that's the, that's the reason why Lagos State is the way it is. Mr. Salami, uh, this week mm. while commissioning the Maternal Health Care Center, uh, the mm -hmm. governor said the private sector should partner with the state government to deliver health uh, infrastructure. Mm. Does yeah. the state have a budget problem? Does, it lack of, uh, does the state lack the funds to roll out health care centers on its own? Do we have a budget problem? No, there's no budget problem. Okay. You see, what I've just, what I've just said there is government is not run alone by those in the, in the, in the study. Okay. You have to allow that private... You see, in advance, in other, in other advanced world, what you see is you allow other private sectors to come up with the idea. I don't see better that. Idea. No, but better ideas are... I don't see that. Oh. I, I lived for 17 years in the UK and I paid taxes there and I never saw government appealing to the private sector to come and help them do their you jobs. You, are you, you claim to be Mr. Eti. Hold on. Yeah, Hold on, Mr. Badamosi. Uh, Mr. Salami, go ahead. Finish your mm. thoughts. So, like I said, mm. anywhere in the world is done. You allow mm. private sector, private sector participation is, is ethical and is allowed. Yes, but, there's also, and, there, but there are also the, the infrastructure rolled out by the government itself. Mm -hmm. mm. There are also, there's also infrastructure that the government themselves have ruled out. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that I agree with you. Okay. How's so. this government doing with that? I'm not, I'm not clear with you. Okay. Maybe Let, the line is painting here. Okay, so let's move on. Let's move on to education and technology. Be meanwhile, you who's listening and watching on Facebook, Nigeria Info 99.3, that's our Facebook. Uh, let me know what you think uh, Samolu's uh, performance in healthcare was. You know, what are your needs as a Lagosian when it comes to healthcare? And how has Samolu addressed or not addressed them? Do you think it's okay for the government to work with NGOs? owned by the governor and the deputy governor the government went on tour of a state owned uh, of state owned not just one state owned schools on july the 21st that's um 33 days after being sworn in and on tuesday 97 uh, days into his term he ordered the recruitment of more teachers mr salami why did it take him one month to look at the schools and three months two months after his tour to start the teacher hiring process like I told you earlier, you mm. know, you see, you don't just go into God, you just like Mr. Gwadamosi there will be thinking mm -hmm. that government business is just something you just sit down to just say, this is how it goes. It is when you go into the system that you know what is operated. You understand? When you go into a particular system, if I don't come to your studio there, I don't know what you have there. Okay. It is when I got there, he now discovered that there are shortages of teachers, these schools have to be, you know, improved on. Of course, and that is why he's doing it. They need to say that we should, you know, recruit more. It just shows he has very good, you know, intentions mm. for the state and for the schools. And I that's see. why he's going there. I see. Uh, how do you respond mm. to that, Mr. Bodamosi? Well, it's sad that he should be saying that um, because I do recall that during the debate, Mr. Sohulu reeled out a rather impressive CV which included copious amounts of experience uh, of working with government right up until that moment. At, as at the time we were uh, campaigning for governorship, Mr. Sohulu was the general manager of the LSDPC, as far as I remember. So mm -hmm. he has always been in government for quite some time now, for at least 12 years he has been in government. So for uh, Mr. Salami, the publicity secretary of the APC, to say the things he's saying clearly shows that he's not... A, a, he's not in government, he's just a politician. Now, apart from a shortage of teachers, what are the other problems you believe we have in the education sector? And what do you uh, think I, the I, governor could have done different in the first 100 days? 100 days. Uh, yes. I, I, like I said at the debate, I think uh, education infrastructure, physical infrastructure, mm -hmm. is in a parlous state. And we should have immediately started dealing with that, even if it's in the case of just renovations to start with before we start all-out construction of new schools and so on. Let's try and maintain the existing ones. And then, of course, the issue of teacher remuneration, mm -hmm. uh, uh, education staff, not just teachers, all the other support staff as well mm -hmm. that work in education. We should have sorted out their remuneration. It's not a matter of just giving LASMA uh, better uh, 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 allowances. Okay. What about the teachers? You know, um, and then of course the issue, the longer term issues, the curriculum, uh, the curriculums of the various uh, levels of education, mm -hmm. primary, 
secondary and the uh, uh, higher institutions. We should have uh, been taking steps to look at this curricula. We should have been training teachers. It's not just about recruiting teachers. Mm. We should have, you know, uh, uh, done a mass recruitment of uh, trainees into the various colleges of education that we have in Lagos State. And, uh, you know, looking forward to about another year or so from now, uh, where we would have a large number of teachers that will be ready to step into positions that we would have created. But of course, um, we're talking about an administration uh, that is a continuous one, that is a continuation of the Tinubu administration uh, that started in 1999 and that has remained unbroken since 1999 up until today. But they will say that they are new to government and that they don't know what they're doing. Now, the, the question as to experience, mm -hmm. the, the question as to what he's saying about, oh, you don't know about the system, this and the other, perhaps you could take a short drive up the uh, Lagos Ibadan Expressway to or your state where the governor there has never been in government, ever, either mm. as an appointee or as an elected person. Are you talking now, about would you, Yes, I'm talking about Mackinday. And if you look at the actions of that governor and the actions of our governor here in Lagos, you can see that there is a very huge gap in the performances of the two governors in terms of their policies, their actions, and the steps that they've taken to make their states better livable for their citizens. All right, hold that thought. Uh, Mr. Salami, this week yeah. we saw the governor commissioning a classroom uh, a block for a public school that was mm. donated by a church. So just like in health, we're seeing private sector contribution to education. And again, yeah. I, I have to ask, does the state government have a cash flow problem. or revenue problem that we should know about? Clearly they do. No, of course there's none. Of course, okay. there's no, we don't have any problem. We don't have any problem in Lagos in terms of revenue, in terms of cash flow. In terms, we don't have any problem. There's a huge debt overhang, however. Okay. We don't have any problem. Now, Massive debt. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Hold on. Now, my final question for you, Mr. Salami. There's a perception, yeah. rightly or wrongly, amongst some, a some APC Buhari supporters that uh, Amnesty International is anti-APC government. In <laughs> fact, <laughs> protesters last month asked the organization to leave Nigeria. Tell us, is this how the party really feels? Not even the party, Nigerians so so. Which Nigerians? Hold on, Na, Mr. Guadamose. No, I don't. Including you, Mr. No, I don't. You, Mr. No. Because they've never seen anything good in what the, this government is doing in fighting you know, terrorism, in most cases. Terrorism. Yes, most cases they 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 have been working against the part, against the government. Eh. Take, yes, that is the position. Mm. So at any given point in time, everybody, an average Nigerian, rational Nigerian, will always see that the Amnesty International Who is, you is an, to be an, a an anti of the government. All right, Mr. Salami, thank you so much for talking to us on hard facts. Okay, thank you so much for having me. All right, Abiodun Salami is the uh, Publicity Secretary of the All Progressives uh, Congress here in Lagos, and he's been so kind to share his time with us. And uh, Mr. Babatunde Badamosi is also a Lagosian, a politician, a businessman. He was recently uh, Governor Sawolu's opponent in the gubernatorial election, one of the opponents, and uh, he's been lending his thoughts, lending his uh, insights into Governor Sawolu's first 100 days. What are your last thoughts before we let you go? I think that the governor needs to wake up. He needs to become his own man. Um, I believe that as somebody of many, many years experience in the private sector, he could uh, serve himself better. You know, he could actually uh, acquit himself better than he's doing now. Uh, and, you know, as the executive governor of Lagos State, he has to remember that it is his name that's on the chopping block, not his godfather's not uh, Mr. Salamis and all the other party apparatchiks that are running up and down uh, trying to create, uh, trying to paint a picture that doesn't exist. Okay, The facts are, you know, uh, the, the facts are there. They're obvious. Lagosians are suffering and they need uh, leadership and that leadership is absent right now. All right, Mr. Badamosi, thank you so much for uh, for joining us on The Big Hard Fact. You just heard The Big Hard Fact when my guests and I were talking about Governor Son Wolu's first 100 days. I really appreciated all your calls and your comments. I'm sorry we couldn't take more. On The Big Three, we talked about back to school for the parents and the children, the latest on xenophobia crisis and one chance robbery. On Eyewitness, I interviewed the new U.S. Consul General for 
for Lagos. And it was a very interesting conversation. After the news at 6, we're bringing you Lagosa. And after that, we will have Listed Lagosian with Iriti Bakara Yusuf inter- interviewing um, Abiola Shegun Williams. Big thanks to Ore, Karim, and the rest of the team behind the scenes. Ago and I are back tomorrow. So you can uh, talk to us online. S S E Z E S E Z E K W E S I L I. I am Sandra Ezekwesili. Hard facts will be right back.